Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, the owl is a wise old bird. And here's my idea of someone who's plenty smart, too. It's the fellow or girl who eats a nourishing breakfast of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. No fooling. Wheat or rice shot from guns is so crisp and tender, it melts in your mouth. It's good for you, too. So tomorrow morning, be smart. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Turk Morris and Nick Calhoun sat in their small cabin on the outskirts of Silver Bend, a set up north of Dawson. Silver Bend was one of the towns that had grown overnight after a gold strike in the creek that bordered it. But Turk and Nick had arrived too late. The only claims left were worthless. Now their supplies were getting low, and the trading post was refusing credit. Turk's face, however, looked animated as he talked to Nick. I tell you, Nick, we can do it. I've watched Louie every night for a week, and he always puts his money, money in the safe just after he closes the store. Does he let you stay and covers his window? That safe is full of the gold the miners leave with him. I saw Dutch Anderson leave four big sacks of it one night. But, Turk, we've sold all our dogs but three of them. We can't get far with a team like that. With two more dogs, we'd be all right. And with no money, where do you think we'll get them? I got that figured out, too. You know old Ned Gray at the edge of town? Yeah. He's got two fine dogs. He's planning to raise dogs and sell them. He keeps them in the woodshed in back of his place, and <laughs> Ned's a sound sleeper. Oh, so we steal the dogs first and then hold up Louie. Can you think of a better plan? The next day, everybody finds out we skipped town. How far do you think we'd get with everybody knowing who did it? Listen, my friend, I've got something above my ears besides hair. We're pretending to check out of here day after tomorrow. We'll say goodbye to everyone and then go to the hills and hide out for a while. We'll sneak in at night to do this job. Nobody will think we did it if we hadn't been around. They won't think of us at all. Hmm. Might work. It will work. And while we're out in the hills, we'll find ourselves a good hideout somewhere and maybe lie low for a while until they give up looking for us. Yeah, if we can get a good team together, we can handle it. We'll have a team, all right. I'm going over to see Ned tomorrow again and get friendlier with those dogs. They'll probably tear us to pieces if we try to steal them. Yeah, I'm taking care of that part of it. Every time I go there, I take a piece of meat with me for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they know me already. Besides, Ned has made the pets of them. They're naturally friendly anyway. Are they good sled dogs? The best, especially the female. She's smart and strong. Lots of stamina, Ned says. We'll be taking a big chance. But if we get away with it... We'll get away with it. And there's enough gold in Louis' safe to last us a lifetime without working. Now, tomorrow, you pass a way around that we're leaving. (laughs) Maybe the boys will even throw a farewell party for us. That'd be a funny one. Yeah. (laughs) The following day, as Turk neared the cabin of Ned Gray, the old man came out of the door with food for his dogs. His leathery face lighted up with a smile of welcome when he saw Turk. Well, good morning, Turk. I didn't expect a visitor this early. How are you, Ned? I just came out to say goodbye. What do you mean? You leaving here? Yep. Nick and I are giving up. We got here a little too late to hit a decent claim. The one I got isn't good, but I do get something out of it. I'd hate to see you go, though. You and me were just getting friendly. Besides, you like dogs just the way I do. I'm going to feed them now. Want to come along? They're back in the woodshed. Sure I do. 
I, uh, I brought them some meat. We had some left that we won't be using, huh? Mind if I give it to them? Well, now, that's mighty thoughtful of you. <laughs> They'll appreciate it. It keeps me humping to feed him. I'm not so spry anymore, and hunting is hard on me. Yep, here's the shed. <laughs> Listen to him. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm coming, you vomit. There you are. Here's your breakfast. Uh, you'd better give them that meat later, Turk. Save it for their dessert. All right. Peggy is sure a good-looking dog, isn't she? Her markings are unusual. A black face with white half-moons over her eyes. You don't see many dogs marked like that. I hope some of her pups look like her. Yeah, Blitz is a nice dog, too. <laughs> you bet he is. They make a fine pair. Both of them got the best dispositions in the world, too. They're as friendly as a couple of kittens. <laughs> <laughs> they, they gulped that breakfast down in a hurry. Uh, is it all right if I give them the meat now? Well, sure thing. Uh, here, Peggy. Here, Blitz. Yeah. Try this. That was mighty thoughtful of you, Turk, to bring me that meat to him. <laughs> I'm sure sorry you and Nick are leaving. Nick and Turk were soon forgotten after they left Silver Bend. But two weeks later, they were back. The snow fell heavily in the darkness as Nick waited in the shelter of some trees. The three dogs, hitched to a sled beside him, began to bark as the figure of Turk came toward them, leading two dogs on leash. Be quiet! Let's trick you fools! Keep those dogs still! Well, I see you got the two dogs from Ned's place. Yeah, it didn't have any trouble at all. Ned was asleep, and I just walked up and took him out of the woodshed. <laughs> They remembered me and didn't make a sound. What do we do now? We'll hitch these dogs to the sled and wait a while. It'll soon be time for Louie to close the store. We'll leave the dogs behind the store and watch Louie through the window. When he gets the safe open, in we go. When Louis Ranier locked the door of his train post that night, he didn't know that Turk watched him from the side window through a small slit in the hide that kept out the cold. As the old Frenchman twirled the combination of the big safe behind the counter, he didn't see or hear the knife that cut through the hide, or hear Turk as he came toward him on moccasined feet. Don't move or turn around, Louis, or this gun will go off. Where did you... Feel this gun on the back of your neck? Please, no shoot. Get up and walk into the back room. I'll bring her up. Do, do, do not shoot me. I do what you say. Sure you will. And if you do, you won't get hurt. Now lie down on that cot, on your stomach. Please. Wait. Now put your hands behind you. Yeah. They're going to tie you up. I'll tie his hands first. Then tie him to the cot. He won't be able to move till morning. That night, the wind and snow covered all the tracks in the community. And when Sergeant Preston stopped the trading post early in the morning, the snow lay like a smooth blanket, clear and undisturbed. His big lead dog, King, followed at his side as the Mountie walked to the door. Well, King, looks as if we're Louis' first customers this morning. Guess we're early. That's funny. Louis must have overslept. He's usually around for this. Louis! Louis! That's odd. wonder if he's sick or something. Hello there, Sergeant Preston. Oh, Ned, how are you? I'm sure glad to see you, Sergeant. My two dogs, Peggy and Blitz, were stolen last night. Huh? I just come to Louis to see if he saw any suspicious-looking people around here yesterday. The dogs were gone when I went to feed them this morning. Maybe they got out some way. No, nope. the door was shut, and there weren't any tracks, what with the snow and wind last night. Now, let's go in and find out if Louis saw anyone around. Louis's door is still locked. I've rapped, but he doesn't answer. Let's go around and see if the back door is open. Those dogs of mine are valuable. I paid lots of money for them. And Peggy's going to have pups. Say, hey, Ned, look at that window. The hide's been cut. Maybe something's happened to Louis. Maybe that's why he won't answer the door. I'll get through this window. <laughs> you in all right, Sergeant? Yes. I'll open the door for you and King. Any sign of Louis? He isn't here in the store. Let's look at the back room. There he is. Found and gagged. Got some water in that. Right, Sergeant. Just a second, Louie. I'll have you free. There you are. Better see him. Now, get these ropes off your hands and legs. Here's the water, Sergeant. Right, Ned. Drink this, Louie. Yeah. Let's see, Sergeant. Can you tell us what happened? Last night, I put money in safe after store is closed. Yes? Then someone put gun to my head. 
Tell me, walk to back room. You got to look at him? Uh, he say not turn around. With gun and back of neck, I do what he say. I don't blame you. There are two of them. They tie me up, put gag in mouth, then go. All night I lie here and no can move. They rob safe, I suppose. Let's go have a look at it. Up you come, Louis. Do you think this robbery has anything to do with my dog's disappearance, Sergeant? I don't know, Ned. It doesn't seem likely that anyone would plan a robbery like this without being well prepared for it. They wouldn't care about the valuable dogs if they got all the gold in Louis' safe. And that's what happened, Sergeant. Look, all gold and money she has gone. Mm. Much of gold belonged to miners who leave it here with me to keep safe. Oh, sacre bleu. What I tell them now? I have absolutely nothing to go on unless... Unless they did steal those dogs of yours, Ned. They'd have no way of knowing that I've seen Peggy and Blitz. And I'm sure neither Peggy nor Blitz would run away, Sergeant. It's a very slender clue, but it's all we have to go on. I'll do my best, Louie. That I know, Sergeant. And with King to help you, I bet you catch them thieves. Sergeant Preston lost no time following up his only clue. At every trading post in the vicinity, he described the dog Peggy. But no one had seen a dog that answered the description. As the days passed, Sergeant Preston grew more and more discouraged. Had he known it, Turk and Nick were less than ten miles from Silver Bend, secure in their hideout, a large cave hidden in the hills. It was eight days after the robbery when Turk and Nick discussed their plans. Yeah, there's one thing I have to do before we leave here, Nick. Yeah? What's that? They may have connected the dog's disappearance with the robbery. Nah. Not much chance of that. We're not taking any chances. We need to go. But did it ever occur to you that Peggy would be an easy dog to spot in case anyone was told to watch for? Yeah, I was thinking of that the other day. Not any dogs are marked like her. And Blitz is different. Lots of dogs look like him. But not one in a hundred is marked like Peggy. We need her for a lead dog. And we're not giving her up. But we can change her looks. How? Before we leave, Peggy isn't going to have a white spot on her. We'll blacken her with chuckles. Sure. Nobody would recognize her then. I think we're safe, Nick. We can start our trail tomorrow. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The whole family goes for these famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. They're shot from gun. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from gun. Man, oh man, huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. And then... These choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And most important, they're nourishing. Good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So try delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So tasty, so easy to serve, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Enjoy this thrifty deluxe family breakfast tomorrow. And remember, for variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one day, Quaker puffed rice the next. Remember, too, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue Quaker package. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice... And Quaker Puffed Wheat. It was early the next morning when Nick yawned and stretched as he emerged from his sleeping bag. And then as he walked out of the cave toward the spot where the dogs were bedded, he gave a startled cry. Turk! Turk, wake up! Wrong. Look over here at Peggy. She had her puppies last night. Well, for the love of Pete. Three of them. Of all the rotten luck. Now what are we going to do? We can't make her work today. Yeah, she may be too weak. Then we can put the pups on the sled and let her run along beside it. She'll be strong enough to be in harness by tomorrow. Say, Turk, uh, don't you think we ought to give her a blanket or something to lie on? No, she's all right. We'll hitch up the team as soon as we eat breakfast. 
I guess we better find a box to put those pups in. There's that case the beans were in. It's almost empty. And we'll use it to carry them on the sled. Now, come on, let's get going. Turk and Nick made slow progress that day with only four dogs to pull the sled. They were often delayed by Peggy trying to get to her complaining puppies. The following day was even worse. When they put Peggy in harness, she stopped periodically and tangled up the teeth by trying to get back to her brood. At last, Turk's temper broke. Ah, that fool dog! Mush! Mush, I say! No use! We can't use Peggy as lead dog with those puppies on the slab. She keeps turning the team around. Oh! oh, oh. Yeah, we'll fix her. Put Blitz in the lead and harness her up behind him. After we get going, take that box with the puppies in it and put it behind a tree somewhere and leave it. Ah, oh, Turk, they'll... They'll starve or freeze. What of it? We can't be bothered with them. As soon as she gets used to them gone, she'll work the way she's supposed to. We can't lose time on account of three puppies. All right. You get the sled going and I'll take the pups off so she won't know the difference. It was later that day that a trapper named Jim Wilson and his young son Tommy were walking toward their cabin a short distance from the trail near Cree's Crossing. Suddenly, Tommy stopped on the trail. Hey, Dad, did you hear something? No, Tommy. What do you think you heard? Listen. That sounds like a puppy. Where's it coming from? Over there, behind those bushes, I think. Come on, let's look. Here we are, Dad. Oh, look. Three of them. And they haven't even got their eyes open yet. In a box. Well, how do you suppose they got here? I'll bet they're hungry. I wonder where the mother is. Can't we take them home, Dad? Well, maybe we'd better. They'll die if we leave them out here. They're only about a couple of days old. Gee, they're pretty. Look at that little black one. Isn't he a beauty? We'll bring the box along, Tommy. You can run to the trading post at Crease Crossing and buy some milk for them. Darkness had fallen by the time young Tommy had reached the trading post at Crees Crossing. As he entered the store, his face lit up when he saw the tall figure of Sergeant Preston talking to Mike at the counter. King, sitting beside the Maori, wagged his tail in welcome as he recognized Tommy. Hello there, King. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Well, Tommy, how are you? Gee, it's sure lucky I found you here. You know a lot about dogs, don't you? Well, uh, Sergeant knows lots about everything, Tommy. Well, I wouldn't say that, Mike, but I do know a lot about dogs. What do you want to know, Tommy? Dad and I found three little puppies in a clump of fir trees today. Oh? Somebody must have left them there to die. They were in a box, and there was no mother around, and they're hungry. Oh, that's odd. Dogs are too expensive up here to do that. Say, maybe someone tried to steal them. Left them there till it got dark. Dad and I don't know much about dogs. Should we feed them canned milk? Their eyes aren't open yet. Well, you'd have to thin it quite a bit. Do you think you could come back to our cabin and help me with them? Dad and I are glad to have you there for supper. Well, I was going to stay with Mike, but I guess he'll excuse me, won't you, Mike? Oh, sure, Sergeant. I know how you like dogs. You go take care of them pups. You better give me some cans of milk, Mike. And, All right, uh, Tommy. I'll pay for them as a present to the pups. Well, here's your milk. I'm sorry, Sergeant, I can't help you find those robbers. But I haven't seen a dog like you describe. Keep your eyes open, Mike. I know they're somewhere in this territory. Come on, Tommy. You can ride on my sled. One king. Here we are, Tommy. One king. Hell, you have seen one Dad will be awful glad to see you. Do you think King will hurt the pups if we let him come in? Of course not. All right, King. Come along, boy. Look who's here. Sergeant Preston. Well, Sergeant, I'm sure glad to see you. How are you, Jim? I uh, hear you adopted three orphans this afternoon. <laughs> yep. And listen to them. I guess they're hungry. We've some milk for them. But open it up, Tommy. We'll add water and then warm it on the stove. I'll get them ready, Sergeant. All right. All right. Let me have your pocket, Sergeant. Uh, thanks, Jim. Now I'd better have a look at those pups. <laughs> All right, King. You can look, too. Well, well. Small, aren't they? Oh, they can't be more than one or two days old. Isn't that little black black one pretty? Hey, lift him up take a look at him. Prettiest markings I ever saw. Come here, little fella. I won't hurt you. What? These markings. Huh? Two white half moons over the eyes. Diamond spot on his back and a white chest. Why do you act so surprised? Jim, I've been trailing dog with markings just like this pup's. He was going to have puppies. 
This must be one of hers. Where'd you find these pups? Oh, just this side of five crossings, where the trail branches off. And whoever left these pups could have taken any of the trails in five different directions. Here's the milk, Sergeant. The is off, but it isn't very warm. All right. Well, this will do, Tommy. We'll feed him with a spoon now. Did you mix this milk with water? Uh-huh, just the way you told me to on the way home. How about this dog you're looking for, Sergeant? Is she stolen? Yes, it's funny, though, Jim. Nobody on the trail saw a dog that looked like her. I questioned everyone. Wonder if this could be just a coincidence. Well, it's dark as pitch outside tonight. There's not much you can do about it till morning. You're right, Jim, unless... Unless what? Would you mind if I stayed here tonight? I'd be glad to have you stay, Sergeant. I have a hunch that a mother dog will be mighty concerned about her pups. She might do something about it. Nick and Turk had branched off the main trail at five crossings. Peggy had been hitched behind Blitz, and not hearing the crying of her puppies, had followed in the traces peaceably. The outlaws reached a clearing and prepared to make camp for the night. It was then that Peggy missed her pups. It was time to feed them, and she didn't hear them crying. She twisted impatiently. Quit wiggling, you fool! How can I get you out of the traces? Now you better take her back to the sled and let her see that her pups ain't there before you tie her up. Maybe that way she'll be quieter. All right. Come on, Peggy. I'll show you your young ones are gone. Then maybe you'll act sensible. Come on. Peggy sniffed at the sled anxiously. When she couldn't find the pup, she grew frantic. Always a gentle dog, she suddenly turned fierce. And with a quick twist of her head, she slashed at Nick's hands. Her sharp teeth tore through his mitten. And with a howl of pain, he dropped her harness. Like a flash, she was off into the darkness. My hand, that she-devil. Why didn't you hang on to her, you fool? Peggy! Peggy, come back here! Her hand's cut. Yeah, we'll never get her back now. It's so dark, we can't even follow her. Oh. We'll have to get along with just four dogs. Back in the cabin, Tommy and his father slept. But Sergeant Preston lay awake and fully dressed on a cot, with King on the floor at his side. Presently, King whined, and then rose and moved to the door. He looked back at his master. And then Preston heard the sound for which he had been waiting... A dog barked outside the door, and King replied. Quiet, King. Something wrong, Sergeant? Sorry to wake you, Jim. Mind if I turn up this lamp a little? I know. Go ahead. I think we have a visitor. Is someone coming, Sergeant Preston? We'll see, Tommy. Well, come on in, Uncle. Why, it's the puppy's mother. Oh, she's going right to them. Well, I'll be darned. Sergeant, you knew she'd come. That's what you were waiting for. It's the mother of the pup's all right, but it's not the dog I was expecting. This one's all black. And you thought she'd marked like the black and white puppy. Still, the way she acts toward King... Oh, she knows him all right. No mother dog would let a strange dog come that close to her pups. King was friendly with both Peggy and Blitz. Peggy! Peggy! Let me have a good look at you, girl. Oh. Sergeant! Your hand is all black. This is Peggy. No wonder nobody remembered her on the trail. The white markings have been covered. Come on, King. We have work to do all oh, oh, oh. Where are you going at this time of night, Sergeant? I'm taking in back trail Peggy. I hope she'd get away tonight when the men who stole her made camp. Takes a lot to keep a mother away from her pups. Well, how did she find them here? She followed the scent, Tommy. She must have spent hours looking back along the trail. Now, King, we're on our way. Come on, fella. Sergeant Preston was unable to see the trail in the darkness, but King knew his job. The Mountie had left his team at Jim's, and he and King made fast time through the night. Dawn was breaking when the Mountie approached a camp where Nick and Turk were cooking breakfast. Hey, Turk, look. Huh? Here comes a man and a dog. Hey, that looks like the Mountie who patrolled Silver Bend. I think he could be looking for us. Yeah, maybe it's a good thing Peggy got away. He might have recognized her. He knew Ned Gray. Now, you let me handle this. Ah, good morning. Morning. I think we've met before. Weren't you two boys prospecting at Silver Bend a while back? Oh, yeah. But we pulled out of there almost a month ago. Huh? I'm uh, Turk Morse. You're Sergeant Preston, aren't you? Yes. Looking for a couple of dogs that were stolen from Silver Bend about ten days ago. Oh, we wouldn't know about that. He left there long before that. My dog seems to have met a friend. What is it, King? Why, it's Blitz... That's one of the dogs I'm looking for. Why, I can't be. We bought him from a man on the trail just a couple of days ago. You see, uh, As Turk talked to Sergeant Preston, Nick gradually edged around behind him. An axe lay on a log near the fire, and Nick's hand crept toward it. The Mountie didn't look around. He knew without looking that King was watching Nick. 
I'm afraid you'll have to prove you bought this dog. I'll have to hold you for questioning. The theft of the dogs is linked to a robbery. You won't mind if I look at that load on your sled? Right dog, King had been watching when Nick lunged forward with the axe uplifted. King attacked to meet Nick's lunge with all the force of his great strength. The man and dog rolled in the snow. Then Turk pulled his gun, but Sergeant Preston was ready. Oh, you don't! There's another for you, Turk! And one more! Takes care of you. Down, King. All right, boy. Get up, Nick. On guard, King. What did you do to Turk? He's just knocked out. He'll recover. Now I'll have a look at the load on your sled. You don't need to bother. No. You'll find what you're looking for. We, me and Turk, we robbed Louis. I know when I'm licked. Very well. Nick, you're under arrest in the name of the Queen. If it hadn't been for that dog... You're quite right, Nick. Because of King and the three cute pups, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, remember, here's how you can have your own swell new miniature Quaker model farm. Yes, get 46 detailed scale models of farm buildings, farm animals, and farm equipment. They're yours at no extra cost. These models are now on all packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. You get farm buildings like Big Red Barn with Sliding Door... And windmill left turns. And other models like tractor and Shetland pony. Build your own complete model farm. Ask for the breakfast cereals, wheat and rice shot from gun. You get as many as six swell models to a single package. Remember, they come only on packages of swell tasting Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Franz Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... The Devil Dog. While I was traveling with a sled train to guard a shipment of furs and gold that the Aurora Trading Company was sending to Skagway, a strange thing happened. I awakened one morning too weak to get out of my blankets. I didn't realize that I'd been drugged by the owners of a dog that had been well-schooled in viciousness. King met that Devil Dog in a showdown fight that had a most surprising outcome. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.